Tonight's special presentation of Jazz at the White House is presented by Toyota. From Washington, D.C., the biggest stars in jazz join together to celebrate International Jazz Day. Jazz at the White House. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Michelle Obama. everybody. Welcome to the White House. Good looking crowd. For five years, International Jazz Day's main event has been celebrated around the world from Istanbul to Osaka to Paris. So we couldn't be prouder that this year, jazz comes back home to America. I want to thank UNESCO, uh, its Director General, uh, Irina Bokova, and the Thelonious Monk Institute for helping us to put on this unbelievable event. I also want to thank someone who has been a great friend to me and Michelle, UNESCO Ambassador, uh, legendary jazz musician and all-around cool cat, Herbie Hancock. And our MC for the evening, who some people think has a pretty good voice, Morgan Freeman. In 1964, Dizzy Gillespie ran for president. This is a true story. And he said, when I am elected president of the United States, my first executive order will be to change the name of the White House to the Blues House. <laughs> so tonight, we're going to do right by Dizzy. We are turning this place into the Blues House. And before anybody calls this executive overreach or <laughs> some sort of power grab, uh, I want to clarify <laughs> that I did not issue a new executive order. I just invited all my favorite jazz musicians to play in my backyard, which is one of the great perks of the job. I don't need to tell this crowd the story of jazz. From humble origins as the music of the black working class, largely invisible to the mainstream. It went on to become America's most significant artistic contribution to the world. Jazz took shape in that most American of cities, New Orleans, where the rich blend of Spanish and French and Creole and other influences sparked an innovative new sound. By the early 20th century, you could walk down the street of the infamous Storyville District, and maybe as you tried to stay out of trouble, hear the likes of Jelly Roll Morton and King Oliver, and of course, Louis Armstrong. Over the years, the sound traveled and changed. Hot jazz, swing, bebop, Latin, fusion, and experiments that defied labels. But its essence has always remained the same. Most jazz lovers probably remember the first time this music got into our bones. Maybe it was Miles teaching us to make room for silence, to hear life in the notes that he didn't play. 
or how Herbie could hang our hearts on a suspended cord, or how Billy's voice, shimmering and, and shattered, seemed to bend time itself. For me, that happened as a child when my father, who I barely knew, came to visit me for about a month. And in the few weeks that I spent with him, one of the things that he did was take me to my first jazz concert, to see Dave Brubeck in Honolulu, Hawaii in 1971. And I didn't realize at the time the impact that it had, but the world that that concert opened up for a 10-year-old boy was spectacular, and I was hooked. Many have said that they've been hooked as well, and perhaps more than any other form of art. Jazz is driven by an unmistakably American spirit. It is, in so many ways, the story of our nation's progress. Born out of the struggle of African Americans yearning for freedom, forged in a crucible of cultures, a product of the diversity that would forever define our nation's greatness. Rooted in a common language from which to depart to places unknown. It's both the ultimate in rugged individualism, to get out on stage with nothing but your instrument and improvise, spontaneously create, and the truest expression of community, the unspoken bond of musicians who take that leap of faith together. There is something fearless and true about jazz. This is truth-telling music. And jazz is perhaps the most honest reflection of who we are as a nation. Because after all, has there ever been any greater improvisation than America itself? We do it in our own way. We move forward even when the road ahead is uncertain, stubbornly insistent that we'll get to somewhere better and confident that we've got all the right notes up our sleeve. And that's what's attracted a global audience to this music. It speaks to something universal about our humanity, the restlessness that stirs in every soul, the desire to create with no boundaries. Jazz is a good barometer of freedom, Duke Ellington once said. No wonder it has such an outsized imprint on the DNA of global music. It has spread like wildfire across the world from Africa to Asia. Jazz blended with the bossa nova of Brazil or the tango of Argentina, which from here on out, I will endeavor to appreciate as a listener and observer <laughs> rather than as a dancer. It can be heard in, on the Scottish bagpipe, on the Indian sitar. It opened up new exchanges with classical music and with Eastern music, and it can make the oldest folk song sound new. Jazz. It's always been where people come together across seemingly unbridgeable divides. And here at home, before schools and sports, it was jazz that desegregated. Because for so many players, the only thing that mattered was the music. Same was true around the world. I was recently in Cuba, the first American president to make that trip in 88 years. And in Havana, you can hear the beautiful sounds of Afro-Cuban jazz and that unlikely marriage of cultures that, a century later, still captivates us. We hope this music will lead to new avenues for dialogue and new collaborations across borders. And if we can keep faith with that spirit, there's no doubt that jazz will live on for generations to come. So let me stop talking. We've got an all-star lineup of artists from around the country and around the world. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Let's do this thing. Jazz at the Blues House. Please welcome Aretha Franklin.
Good evening, everyone. Mr. President, in your departure from the Oval Office, I just wanted to say that I appreciated you so much and thank you so much for your leadership of we the people, all of the people. Our First Lady, Mademoiselle Obama, with her fabulous Hulk Couture designs. Thank you so much for your representation. You all have been wonderful. I hate to see you go. Okay. song for you. We were alone and I was singing this song for you. Welcome to Jazz at the White House, a celebration of International Jazz Day. Please welcome your host, Morgan Freeman.
Good evening. And welcome to Jazz at the White House. Now, before we begin this extraordinary evening of music, I'd like to thank the President and his extraordinarily beautiful First Lady for allowing us to bring all of these instruments into your home for this good old-fashioned jam session. Hello. Jazz at the White House is a celebration of International Jazz Day. It's a worldwide annual event that takes place on April 30th in over 190 countries on all seven continents, celebrating the global influence of jazz. While it originated right here in the United States, jazz has become an international art form that for more than a century has helped soothe and uplift the souls of millions of people. Tonight, we're joined by jazz icons and master musicians. These artists from different parts of the globe may speak different languages, but they all understand the language of jazz. This is the spirit of what International Jazz Day is all about promoting the need for intercultural dialogue and mutual understanding. As a lifelong jazz and blues fan, I'm honored to host this event and have such a great seat to witness and interact with this once-in-a-lifetime group of musicians. Tonight, we celebrate the music. To get things started, the White House's own Herald of Trumpets will lead us into a beloved jazz standard that beautifully blends the tender with the tough. Please welcome Trombone Shorty, Ben Williams, Kurt Elling, Chris Bowers, Brian Blade, along with the Rebirth Brass Band and Dee Dee Bridgewater, performing St. James Infirmary.
tones from Trimmy to sing my song. Oh, oh honey, I am. right into this pocket right here with her pretty face sticking right out the front. Just let them know that when I died, I had money to my name. I've, I've got, got the, the same James in Four-time Grammy Award winner, Esperanza Spalding. Good evening. It is such an honor to be a part of this incredible evening of music that champions peace and unity. And it's a personal thrill to be among so many legendary artists, many of whom are my musical heroes like these musicians in our next number performing Con Poco Coco. Please welcome Sakir Hussein, Leonel Loweke, James Morrison, Pequito de Rivera, Ben Williams, and Chucho Valdez.
In the spirit of great jazz crooners like Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, and Harry Connick Jr., comes an artist who's as adept on piano as he is singing jazz tunes. Joined on stage by Till Brona, Bobby Watson, Ben Williams, and Brian Blade, please welcome Jamie Cullum. I'm sorry to say I didn't know her name. In fact, the last six hours are a hay. Piecing together the fragments of a frame. And why my motor skills are out of phase. I feel like I've awoken in a maze. Though we've never met before, baby, I am sure. It was just one of those things, one of those crazy flings. One of those bells that now and then rings. It was just one of those nights, just one of those fabulous flights, a trip to the moon on gossamer wings. It was one of those things. If we thought a bit about the end of it. As we started painting the town, we have been aware that our love affair was too hard not to cool down. So, goodbye, and our man. Here's hoping we'll meet now and then. It was great fun, but it was just one of those. Performing straight up and down, please welcome Christy McBride, David Sanchez, Terrence Blanchard, Brian Blade, and 22-time Grammy-winning pianist, composer, and jazz legend, Chick Corea.
1959, Miles Davis introduced the jazz world to Kind of Blue. John Coltrane released his giant steps. That year, Dave Brubeck and his quartet composed a song that created an entirely new style that revolutionized the genre. Here to perform the seminal piece, Take Five, welcome Christian McBride, Lee Rittenauer, Sadao Watanabe, Brian Blade, Chick Corea, and Al Jarreau. <laughs> Now it's all right when you take it by. on the South Lawn of the White House. But the beauty of music is its ability to transport us to different places without ever having to leave our seats. So in the spirit, let's take a journey to southern Brazil and Uruguay and experience the Minuano. 
The Miniwano is known as a cold wind that appears following a heavy rain. At its most powerful, it produces a howling sound. It's the kind of weather that no one wants to be caught in. Then there is the Miniwano that comes to us tonight a jazz tune that provides us chills by the pure beauty of the euphoric sound and its ability to make us feel the powerful winds without having to endure the weather. Aren't you glad? Here to perform is guitar master Pat Metheny, <laughs> accompanied by John Beasley on keyboards, Zakir Hussein on tabla, Danilo Perez on piano, Kendrick Scott on drums, Christian McBride on bass, and the vocal stylings of Diane Reeves, ladies and gentlemen, Minuano. Is a room in the White House the president often uses to greet foreign heads of state and members of Congress. Tonight, we take you into this historic room for an intimate performance by two jazz legends. Performing East of the Sun, please welcome Christian McBride and Diana Croft. sun and west of the moon we'll build a dream house of love dear close to the sun in the day and nearer to the moon at night we'll live in a lovely way dear sharing our love and the pale moonlight just you and I forever and a day love will we keep that way Up among the stars we'll find A harmony life to love to tune East of the 
the sun, west of the moon, dear, east of the sun and west of the We now go to the formal entrance of the White House, the grand foyer. Jazz's traditional mentor-apprentice relationship is exemplified in our next multi-generational performance. Tonight, we brought together the legendary Wayne Shorter, Grammy winner Esperanza Spalding, and 12-year-old jazz pianist Joey Alexander, performing Wayne Shorter's classic Footprints. In 1801, the former office of President Thomas Jefferson was converted into the state dining room. Tonight, this room that has hosted dinners for countless heads of state 
serves up a performance with legendary jazz artists, performing nine Esperanza Spalding, Zakir Hussein, John Beasley, Lionel Lueke, Kendrick Scott, and Diane Reeves. <laughs> Outside of my window, say, can you come out and play? And I brought a bag of her mama's cooking spoons so we could dig a hole and try to reach China and get there by her. the sky filled with dreams Any child could wear a paper crown and be a king or queen At night Performing the Miles Davis classic, Spanish Key, John Beasley, Kendrick Scott, John McLaughlin, Wayne Shorter, Terrence Blanchard, Zakir Hussein, Chick Corea, and Marcus Miller.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Director General of UNESCO, Irina Bokova. What an incredible evening. Mr. President, um, distinguished guests, um, I am very honored to be here with you this evening. And thank you very much, Mr. President, for having us opening the White House uh, for this uh, fifth celebration of the International Jazz Day. Tonight, indeed, the White House had, uh, has turned into a jazz club, a blue house, uh, as you said. But what is most important for us is that we celebrate jazz as a dialogue among culture, as uh, human rights, as quest for freedom and for human dignity. Jazz was born in this country, but now is traveling all around the world. It has helped shape the American spirit, and now it is owned by all the people all over the world. And this is not only that jazz is a great music, it is because jazz carries strong values. Jazz is about freedom, about courage, renewing itself every time it is played, and we are seeing this with every single minute this evening. Jazz is about civil rights and civil dignity. It was the soundtrack of struggle in this country, and I would say beyond. But jazz is also about diversity, drawing on roots in Africa, the Caribbean, Europe, and elsewhere. And through jazz, we learned about discrimination, about racism, but we learned about pride and dignity. Through jazz, we improvise with others. We live together better in dialogue and respect. Jazz, I believe, touches our hearts and souls and influences the way we think and behave. And this is why UNESCO created the International Jazz Day. And I believe this is something that we share with the United States. The conviction we must nurture and harness together the power of heritage, education to promote universal values. Because culture and human rights go hand in hand. And those who seek to fragment humanity always target culture. In response, we must think, we must listen, and we must share even more culture, heritage, and ideas. And I remember the sound of hundreds of drums playing on Congo Square in New Orleans. The first year we celebrated the International Jazz Day in 2011. And I think I st still hear the drums of Congo Square today here in the White House, in the sound of artists from all over the world, together united singing for peace, for freedom, and for respect. This is what jazz is all about. And this is what UNESCO stands for. And we are honored to share this with you in the United States and with the world. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a big honor to be with you here this evening. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, stay. Good evening. It's a great honor to introduce a man who, is in a six-decade career, has used his instrument to create songs of protest that gave voice to an entire nation. His struggle for human rights, coupled with the knowledge that music has the power to heal, are exemplified in the anthem he wrote in support of his friend, the imprisoned South African leader, Nelson Mandela. Joined by Chris Bowers, Lee Rittner, Till Brunner, Bobby Watson, Elie de Gibri, Marcus Miller, Kendrick Scott, Didi Bridgewater performing Mandela. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Hugh Masekela.
Please welcome UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, Chairman of the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz, 14-time Grammy Award winner and Academy Award winner, Herbie Hancock. Thank you so much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Five years ago, International Jazz Day was a small but substantial phenomenon. And now, thanks to billions, yes, billions of people of all ages, races, and religions, Jazz Day has become a powerful and critical global movement. So enormous it blankets our planet, and yet it's also a, a philosophy that can take root and fit perfectly in our hearts. Now, I've crossed countless borders traveling to every corner of the globe, and I know that we all possess the innate ability to get along, even with our differences. But in order to move forward, we must open our hearts and respect each other's principles. This is what jazz teaches us. And it's a perfect formula to help us learn to live peacefully together. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank President Obama and Michelle Obama for opening up your home, our home, and for hosting our global all-star concert and helping us capture the worldwide attention we need to spread and accomplish our ultimate goals. My original idea for our next segment was to link two of my passions. There's jazz and there's hip hop. Because these improvisational art forms change the course of music history and continue to impact culture around the world. But last week, we lost a legend, an icon, the son of a jazz pianist whose music inspired a new generation of artists to create without boundaries. Courageous, playful, wise, brilliant, and a feast for the eyes and ears, 
Prince epitomized the word music. And tonight, we celebrate his incredible virtuosity and pay tribute to his legacy that spans every musical genre. Joining me, please welcome Robert Glasper, Rhapsody, Lionel Lewicki, Terrace Martin, Ben Williams, and Terry Lynn Carrington. doing I'm Miss Evans if you don't mind can I ask you a question that is of course baby if you've got time it'll only take a second to get what's on my mind into words and phrases story constellations trying to paint a picture you me us no need to even speak your smile says enough enough to let me know you feel what I'm saying me and you together united like nations boy you got me days physique's quite amazing but you got a mind I'm enjoying conversation exotic tropic warm relaxing love has limits but boy I'm trying to max it with you Make it do what it do. Purple rain, you're the most beautiful to me. Uh, you're the most beautiful to me. Academy Award winner, Helen Mirren. This is jazz, we improvise. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful to be here this evening and to introduce a legendary musician, a fellow countryman of mine, whose affinity for jazz led him to write and record this song on his album, Nothing Like the Sun. Joining him on stage, Herbie Hancock, Robert Glasper, Lionel Luecke, Marcus Miller, Terry Lynn Carrington, and guitar legend, Pat Matheny. Ladies and gentlemen, Sting. <laughs> Shadows, I 
would hide Ah, oh, good people Sleep tonight I'm all by myself In your silver light I would gaze at your face The whole night through I'd go out of my mind But for you The blues and jazz share a rich history and form the foundation on which all modern American music was created. Bet you didn't know that. Buddy Guy has often been called, has often been called one of the best guitarists of all time. And he's here tonight to play one of his signature blues tunes. Please welcome the legendary Buddy Guy. I'm looking for alcohol. Give me 
in Chicago. Oh, how's the street? Maybe in Chicago. Get yourself something to eat. Come on, let me man. Been all over the world. Nothing like walking down the street with a sweet old Chicago girl. Maybe in Chicago. almost come to the end of this remarkable night of music. This celebration of International Jazz Day would not be complete if we didn't have one last mega performance featuring all of the legendary musicians you've seen and heard tonight. So tell you what we're going to do. We're bringing them all back on stage now for what promises to be a high point of this evening. It's now my honor to welcome my dear friend, <laughs> Herbie Hancock. <laughs> wow. You having a good time? That's what we're talking about. From the dawn of its birth, jazz has stood for hope in a world that doesn't always make things easy. And tonight, we've demonstrated that no matter where we live, what language we speak, who we worship, or the color of our skin, jazz knows no boundaries. Each year, we've ended our International Jazz Day All-Star Global Concert 
with a transformative song that is near and dear to my heart and probably to yours, a song that asks us to envision a world where all citizens live in peace. Written by John Lennon, it perfectly sums up the positive sentiment and solidarity of International Jazz Day. So now, please welcome back the global all-stars for our traditional performance of inspirational song, Imagine. Imagine there's no countries It isn't hard to do Nothing to kill or die for And no religion to Imagine all the people living life in peace. Ooh -hoo. Now you may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope so. And the world will live as one. Imagine there's no heaven. It isn't hard to do. No hell below us. I know.
will be as as Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to introduce my good friends, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, and Mrs. Michelle Obama. Everybody, I don't have much to add except just to say thank you to Herbie Hancock and this incredible array of talent. We want to thank UNESCO. We want to thank all that helped to produce and make this possible. We want to thank the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling the spirit of jazz. And I'm imagining a better world because of all of these outstanding artists. Give them a big round of applause one more time. I hope everybody had a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Love you guys. God bless you. Air transportation provided by United Airlines, official airline of International Jazz Day.